you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It be so many times in our lives that we get so wrapped up with the cares of this world and it's like that. We can't give God our best praise and our best worship. So we want to do that right now. We're not going to be worried about all that stuff that's going on in the world. All that stuff that's, that's going, floating around in our minds and our hearts. Those situations in our finances and in our homes, our marriages. Right now, we want to concentrate on God. We don't want to be distracted by nothing. We don't want to be consumed and, and concentrating on nothing else right now. But God, fill us today, God. Fill us with your presence on today, God. Endow us with your spirit right now, God. Oh, Lord, we don't want to be wrapped up in nothing else but you right now, God. We want the more of you, God. I'll pour your spirit right now, God, because we want to worship you, God. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We want to worship you right now, God, from the very pit of our souls, Lord. Oh, God, because you are the epitome and the very essence of it all. Oh, yeah, my honey, the local we want to give it all to you right now. We want to give you our best praise and our best worship. We be too modest. We be worried about what everybody else doing. We be worried about who he and who ain't. But right now, God, we want to concentrate on you, Lord, and worship you with all of me. Oh, God, because you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. We're not going to put nothing in nobody higher than you. We're not going to exalt anything or anybody higher than you. And in fact, since we did, we want to pull it down right now. We want to pull it down right now, God. Oh, Baba Baha Shandere La Castilla. We want to give it all to you right now. Because you're worthy. God. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are great God. And you are great to be praised. There's none like you, God. Now, then, and even to come. You are truly one of a kind. And we want to glorify your God. We want to glorify your God. You say into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. So we want to do it now. We want to set the atmosphere and welcome you into this place. We want to set the atmosphere that you may enter in. Oh God, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Cause you're worthy, God. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are greatly, you are greatly to be praised, God. You said it, God, that you created us to worship you with the very fruit of our lips. So we're gonna do it, God. We dare not allow any rocks to cry out for us. Oh God, we wanna be a sweet savor to your nostrils. We want to get your attention on this morning. So we want to bless you, Lord. We want to bless you, Lord. We want to bless you, Lord. Because you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You worthy, God. It is to you, God. It is to you. We are not going to cheat you. We are not going to cheat you. But we are going to bless you, God. We're going to bless you, God. We're not going to do it just because we are in expectation for you to do something back. We're not going to do it, God, just because. Oh, God. But we're going to do it because we delight in doing so. We are not coming into your sanctuary as a ritual. We're not 
not coming into your sanctuary uh, just because it's Sunday and nothing else to do. Uh, we're not coming into your sanctuary, God, uh, just because we want to be seen. Uh, but we are coming, God, uh, that you may meet us here. Uh, we want to meet you today, God. Uh, we are seeking you today, God. Uh, we are looking for you today, God. Uh, and we're welcoming you into our hearts. Uh, we're welcoming you into our minds. Uh, we're welcoming you into our situations. We are welcoming you into our circumstances. Oh God, all this stuff that we carry, all these things, God, that's embedded inside of us, we want to lay it at your feet. We want to give it all to you right now, God. Such a small sign. Oh God, because don't nobody know the heaviness that we carry individually. Don't nobody really know God. So we want to lay it down at your feet, God. Even in annoying when people hate you. Even in annoying when people resent you. Even in annoying when people don't like you. Even in annoying when people want to make you feel some type of way. We want to give it all to you right now. We want to give it all to you right now, God. That problem, God, in our families, Lord. That thing that goes on in our marriages, God, and it's been going on for years, Lord. We want to lay that at your feet, too. Because we want you to settle here today. We want you to settle here, God, because we know that you are concerned about us. We know, God, that you love us so much. Come in, God. Be in our midst, Lord. Be our cousin, and our cousin, and our Oh, God. Settle in today. Settle that situation that goes on in our hearts, God, that causes us to even be mad at you. Settle that situation that goes on in our hearts, God, that causes us, Lord, to serve the devil, God. Settle that situation, God, that's going on in our hearts, God. Because that's what you look at. You look at the heart. You search the reins. And you sit your son, Jesus, that we may have a right of passage. Settle it, God, today. You gave us the right of passage through his blood. We do not have to be in bondage. We do not have to be mentally disabled. We do not have to be hateful and bitter. We do not have to be that But your blood, Jesus, gave us the right of passage that we could be developed into your freedom. Help us out today, God, and settle here. Oh God. We don't want to be complacent and modest. We want to get past that familiar territory. And it's okay if you make us uncomfortable because we know in that discomfort that you illuminating us, that you elevating us, that you purging us, that you stripping some things. It's okay. And I welcome it, God. You gotta want that thing for yourself. You gotta want that thing for yourself. See, let me explain something to y'all. Let me explain to y'all how God allowed us to be free through Jesus. Let me explain to you how our rite of passage came through Jesus and his blood. See, we could have kept going through somebody else. We could have. Oh God, I thank you for that. That intimacy that you want for us. Oh, thank you, God. Say that again. Let it settle. See, he wanted personal intimacy. 
that seat with us. He wanted an intimacy with us individuals. He gave nobody else. Build that intimacy for you with God. They can't. They can't. I don't care how you look to them. I don't care how you ask them to pray for you. I don't care how you expect it. It ain't going to work like that. It don't work like that. He gave us a rite of passage. When Jesus gave up the ghost and the veil was torn, baby. We got that rite of passage right then and there. We got the rite of passage right then and there when he told the veil. Because he says, I want you to come to me. I want you to come to me for yourself. I want you to come to me and seek my face. I want you to come to me and confess. I want you to come to me that I can in your go see make everything new. See, it wasn't working the way we wanted to do it. That ain't how it works. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Settle here, God. Settle in our hearts that we could get real with you today. I want to be real with God. I don't want to be fake. I don't want to have a two-face. I don't want to live a double life. I don't want to be sometimes in I don't want to be jumping in and out. Uh-uh. I want to be real about this thing. And I know and I confess that I can't do it on my own. But I can go to him on my own and I can tell him that for me, for me, I can't do it for nobody else. Now, I can pray with you and stand in the gap. Uh. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm asking you to touch us on today, God. Settle in our hearts and even in our minds, God. That we'll cast all our cares on you because we know that you care for us. That we can lay down everything that's weighty on us, God. Open up our understanding today. Help us today, God. That we could be washed over. That we could be cleansed. That we could be renewed. Seven that he'll go see any and everything that's not like you in us, God. Because we want to be right. Open your mouth. Don't wait to hear what your neighbors will say. They don't need what you need. Throw your hands up. Open you know what you need from God. Don't go to my father and expect a temporary fix. Uh-uh. Because if you go to him with the wrong motives and the wrong attitude and the wrong intentions, that's all you're going to get is a temporary fix for the moment. Just for the moment. You ain't going to be able to have no solidity to walk in the soundness and in the fullness of his glory. You ain't going to have that. You're going to always be in that place and in that state of mind. You're going to always be prideful and haughty and, and bitter and, and don't want to hear it. Don't go to him like that. Go to him in expectation for something new. Seek in his face because that's what you want with everything in you. Not just for the moment. We have a right of passage. I will write a passage. The development of freedom, part two. What's the verdict? Is it freedom or death row? Is it freedom or death row? That's what we need to ask ourselves because we have a choice. I don't want to come to church out of obligation, people. I don't want to come to church just to be seen or in expectation 
to be acknowledged. But I want to come to church because I want to be real. I want to be saved. And I want to be filled with his Holy Spirit. That I may be able to build that intimacy with him. We got to stop lying to ourselves. Lying to others. And most definitely lying to God. The name of the sermon today is I will write a passage and, and there's a colon the development of our freedom part two and above that is going to be the verdict and another colon freedom or death row which one do you choose today see because if you're walking up death row then you're simply going to die. Whoever watched the Green Mile, <laughs> yeah, when they start walking up death row, baby, they was going to die. It wasn't no turning back. It wasn't no changing the mind. It wasn't no overturning the ruling. The verdict was death row. Jesus came into this world that we may have life and have it more abundantly. That's why he came. He came and he gave us a choice that we can choose freedom or death row. A lot of us don't understand how write a passage a lot of us don't understand what freedom is because we still have that slave mentality. We still in a place of bondage because of what somebody said, what they did, how they acted, how they react, how they perform, or what I experienced, or what I go through, or how about what I'm still experiencing and going through. We still got to write a passage. We still have a right of passage. <laughs> Our right of passage, the development of freedom, part two. The verdict, is it freedom or is it death row? We have a right to choose. We have a right to choose. I'm going to give y'all some definitions before I go any further because I want to explain some things to you guys that you may be able to understand that when Jesus came and he hung on that cross, he gave us a right of passage because it wasn't working out with just the Ten Commandments. <laughs> it wasn't working out for us, y'all. It didn't give us the right to pass. You... Okay, let me go back here and say it. Let me, let me go back here. When Jesus came, he died that we may have the right of passage. Because it was not working out with the Ten Commandments and the way that we were doing things. And let's say the way we still do things. We did not have the right to pass. We didn't. I've been trying to tell people and the folk to be on time, but I ain't going to start over today. I'm not. Because the goodies be in the beginning. The conclusion is the deliverance. See, if you don't get the beginning, how could you get to your deliverance stage? See, you got to first get the beginning of it that you will be able to get to the end of it. See, the in-between... It's the development. Did I tell y'all the name of the sermon? It's the, I write a passage, and then there's a calling, and then the development of our freedom. See, if we don't get the beginning, which was the Ten Commandments and understanding why they had to cross over, then we will not get to the end. Now, the middle part of it is our development. He never said it was going to be easy. 
but he did say tried and true. <laughs> he did say that. So you got to be tried before you can even become a true warrior. Let me say that again. You got to be developed into that warfare stage. Because in the beginning, it's hard to go into warfare when that trial comes, when that test is testing you, when that challenge is overtaking you, when you're being consumed by that experience. I'm going to say that low, experience. We, okay, I know I'm getting ahead of myself. Right. What do right mean? R-I-T-E. See, we got a right, a passage. A right is an often repeated action or a series of actions performed in accordance with tradition or a set of rules. What does passage mean? The action or process of passing from one place or one condition or a stage to another. A right, liberty, a freedom, or permission to pass. Forward movement in time of pass. Some of us get stuck and we can't see the passage because we don't understand our rights. Okay? Why we don't understand our rights? Because we got a form of godliness and denying the power. Again, when Jesus came, it was some things activated for us. It was some things that was left for us to utilize. So, if we don't understand passage, we are never coming to the understanding of our rights. Did, did, did I say that clear enough? The development of freedom. This is part two. I gave y'all part one last Sunday. Development. It's a condition or occurrence traceable to a cause. Now, what is that cause? It's a reason why you got to go through this because it may be something that God want to purge. It may be something that he want to cut off. Or sometimes he got to sever some things. Oh, wait a minute. It may be some things he got to uproot from us. It may be some things that he has to simply allow us to see that we have a right to get past this. What is this? Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. It don't matter. Whatever. We, we mess our own selves up. I'm, I'm going to prove it to you. A right of passage is a ritual event or experience that marks or constitutes a major milestone or change in a person's life. How many times I've said a change brings about change? In your right of passage, that means it's going to be some changes that take place in your life. The verdict, freedom or death row. What is the verdict? It's the finding or decision of a matter or position arrived at after consideration. Okay, wait a minute, hold it. What is my verdict? You got a right to choose. How can I choose? Because the Bible says that God is the author and the finisher. He gave you a right to choose freedom or death row. I could choose to be free by what? Choosing Christ. I could choose to do death row, walk in that green mile, baby, by simply serving the death. I'm going to prove all this to y'all in a minute. Hold on. Hold on. What is death row when you sentence your own self to death? We could sentence our own self to death, and that could be in any area. We could sentence our own self to death, even in our very thoughts. Why? Because you think negative all the time. You degrade your very own self. When you get to saying that I can't. But God say anything is possible through him. And the only way that you will believe that. Is if you believe that Jesus. Gave us the rite of passage when he died. 
on that cross and gave up the ghost. How? How? Because he tore the veil. I'm going to say it again. It wasn't working for us in the beginning. Because you, you would have had to go through the priest. You would have had to go through somebody else. But now, he wants you to have an intimate relationship with him one-on-one. -on -one. He wants you to come to him for yourself. The Bible says when he gave up the ghost, the earthquake, it opened up, the dead rose. That's where they got the zombies from, just to let y'all know. And then the Bible says that the veil was torn. That way, some things were split, wasn't it? Was some things separated? I gave y'all the three focal points last week. The three focal points of this rite of passage the first thing is separation. That is moving yourself from the familiar. Some of us be so comfortable in that sad place, that depressed place, and it's so familiar for us until when God put us in another place that makes us have joy, we get to thinking on things that has happened or things that is going to happen or we get to thinking of the impossible or speaking negative to our own selves until we put our own selves right back into that familiar place of depression and sadness. Is that not death row? <laughs> is you not killing you with your own mind, with your own thoughts? Because, oh, wait a minute, and with your own beliefs? Because I can believe it for you, but I can't believe it for me. You on death row for you. You on death row for you, baby. I can, I can, I can do it. You know, I can, I can pray for somebody else, but I can't pray for myself. Then guess what? You on death row because there's no way that you could pray for somebody else and can't pray for yourself. That's a form of being two faced. Wait, hold it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did I go there? Yeah, he went there. You can't put on two faces. You it. I told y'all what he showed me. A face looking this way and a face looking that way. And what way? You, you ain't even got, a two-face don't even have a form of wholeness. There's no wholeness in two faces. Siamese twins, every Siamese twin want to be separated, don't it? Because there's two faces. They want their own what? Identity. So you can't have a single identity with two faces because that's simply a lie. It's a lie. Okay. The next focal point is the transition and the change. After you move and separate yourself from that familiar, it's going to be a change that takes place. Is that not what Jesus did? See, these are all the things that Jesus did when he came. And we have to do in order to have the right to pass through. It ain't no other way. You Okay. I want y'all to go to Romans. Listen. The third focal point is the reconciliation. It's the transformation and the newness. So the first the first focal point is the Father, the second is the Son, and the third is the Holy Spirit. Separation, transition, and reconciliation. See, the separation was removing from the familiar, the thing that caused us to sin, the thing that caused us to think this way or act that way. Y'all don't believe me? Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans, chapter 8. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. See, we get the scriptures twisted when we start thinking this thing or believing this thing or believing it's this way or that way when we really don't even have the revelation. We may have an understanding, but do we have the full understanding? Because the Bible declares that all you're getting, get an understanding. But we think we know it all. 
because we've been in church for so long or you could even be in a conversation and, and, and I could be talking to you. How many times me and you have been in a conversation and in the midst of me being in a conversation, you'll cut me off and say something and then I'll be like, that is not what I was going to say. Because you thought you knew it all, what I was talking about, but you didn't. Ever. How many times I told you that, Lisa? You quite a few. How you gonna cut me off because you think you know where I'm going with this? Or you think you know what I'm fit to say? Because on the line of the conversation, we didn't discuss it before, but you don't know what's been added or taken away from it. So I was like, I said, girl, just wait for the what? Conclusion. Because you don't know it all. Well, Pastor, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. You got to wait till I finish. Because it may be on the line of something that you're familiar with because we talked about it. But you don't know what the end result going to be. Is that not our lives? That's our lives. We know the beginning again. And we know the end because he didn't told us. But he never told us what we had to go through to pass by to get to it. This is our rite of passage. We got the rite of passage through Jesus when he died on the cross. Listen to this. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're going to start from the very top. There is, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What is condemnation? It's to declare to be reprehensible, wrong or evil, usually after weighing evidence and without reservation. An often public or formal expression of disapproval. Condemnation is to find or pronounce guilty. It's to adjudge unfit for use or consumption. It's to declare to be morally wrong or evil. It's to express one's unfavorable opinion of the worth or quality of. That's what condemnation is. Listen to this scripture again. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So what does that, what does that scripture mean? That scripture means to be carnally minded. See, we think when the, when, when the Bible, this scripture right here, specifically this scripture, says something about the flesh, we think that he's just talking about the lusts of and the things that we covered after or the things that's hard for us to get over. But baby, listen, he's talking about right here in this scripture right here, he's talking about our thoughts. He's talking about our intentions. He's talking about our motives. He's talking about some things that we see and that we hear that causes our flesh, which is our Thoughts to rise up and we fall subjected to that instead of the spirit. Let me prove it. Let me prove it. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So in other words, people will try to come and condemn you when you are doing the things of the spirit because they are doing the things of the flesh and then they will point the finger and wag the head at you to try to make you think or believe that you are doing something wrong. Their opinion of it is because they are carnally minded, they cannot see the spiritual value of the conversation. Did y'all get that or do I need to repeat it? See, the devil ain't got no place here today. I'm exposing all his tools and his devices today. And I pray that we all open up our eyes and ears that we may be able to see and be able to hear that we can reprehend some things. And we won't be stuck. And not understanding that we got a right, a passage. We got a right to be free from that. What I just explained, we got a right to be free from carnality. How? When Jesus hung on that tree, y'all, he gave us a right to be free from that. He did. He gave us a right. For the law of the spirit of life 
in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. I just said that. Did I not? Listen. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. I explained all that already. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, which is us, condemned sin in the flesh. So sin is condemned, not us. How? Through and in who? Christ Jesus. I just explained all this. I know I be getting ahead of myself. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in who? Us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay. Did it say two words? It said to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life. What? And peace. See, you can only get peace by allowing the spirit of God to dwell inside of you. Even in the midst of of a conversation even in the midst of financial difficulties even in the midst of sickness and agony and regrets and pain and hearsay she say and I say because we say a whole lot of stuff to our own selves okay <laughs> that's what we do we conjure up our own death here on earth and we be walking around dead. Literally. We walk around dead and thinking we got life. I got life because he's breathing in me. Yeah, you got natural life, but your spiritual life is what? Dead. You walking in sin because of your flesh. What do you mean? Because of your thoughts, your attitudes, the subjection. Okay, I'm finna prove it. I'm going to prove it. I know I done got way ahead of myself. Because the carnal mind, it, that, what is carnal? It's relating to or given to crude bodily pleasures and appetites of the world. It's having to do with life on earth, especially as opposed to that in heaven. Carnal is of relating to the human body. It's pleasing to the physical senses. So what is it talking about? Not just your body, but your mind. Your thoughts, your actions. Listen. What to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. What is enmity? Positive, active, and typical mutual hatred or ill will. It's a deep seated ill will. So, How could you say that the spirit of God dwells in you, in me, him, her, they, we, all of us, and you have a deep-seated hatred or ill will against somebody else? The spirit of God don't dwell in you. Oh, wait a minute. Let me give y'all the scriptures. I don't make this up. I don't make it up. I'm going to prove it. Romans 6. 14. It says, for, sh for sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Because we still do stuff. Because we know God going to show us that mercy and that grace. So in actuality, we acting like dope fiends and we are substance abusers. Oh, the Lord know my heart. You abusing his grace and his mercy. Oh, the Lord knows what I want and what I do. So he'll forgive me. Yes, so you're going to keep doing and thinking the same way. You're going to keep thinking ill will and hate that person. You're going to keep acting this way and doing that. You're going to keep up. Okay, let me prove it to you. Listen. For, she, for sin shall not have dominion over you. This is part of our right of passage. I'm going to prove it. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not 
that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So in other words, if you yield yourself unto that evil and that ill will and that, that bitterness and that anger, guess who you is obeying and you are serving to? Say Lucifer, say the devil. Because God is not. If you submit yourself unto the mighty hand of God and you obeying him and doing what he say, do that. Guess who you serving to? Say God. Jehovah. So whoever you allow yourself to fall victim to. <laughs> because we call it, we think we victims. You ain't no victim because you have a choice. You have a choice, so I don't feel sorry for you. <laughs> it's tight, but it's right. <laughs> I don't feel sorry for you. And in the midst of you doing these things and acting this way, if you recognize it and stop yourself the mid-action of it, then that's when that compassion and that pity come. You know why? Because you are proving yourself. And you are submitting yourself under what? The spirit of God. Because in the midst of you doing it, and I know I ain't the only one. When you get ready to say something mean or evil, or act some type of way, or think in some type of way towards somebody, don't God check you before you do it. And if you mess around and keep sliding down that slope in the midst of you doing it, don't he check you again. So you still got a choice to keep going and stop, right? So, okay, I'm going to say it again. I don't feel sorry for you if you keep going. Because you got a choice. You got a choice to keep doing it and to keep acting and to keep... But, okay, let, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself again. Listen. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. So when I'm giving you these things and when I'm telling you these things, then from your heart it's changing some things and you get out of that familiar place, right? That's when that change come, right? That's when that transformation start taking place, right? And that's when you could be reconciled to that which is good for you, which is God and which is right. Because anything that is contrary to the will of the way of God is the devil. It's wrong. It's unrighteousness. <laughs> Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. What do that scripture mean? It means now you can think right. Now you can think right. Now you can act right. Now you can do things a little bit better. Now you can act a little bit better. Now you can change some things because you chose to do right. Listen to this. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of the flesh. And I already explained all that stuff. The ones who came in late, that's why I tell you to be early. The infirmity inside of your flesh. Those things that you fall victim to, it does not mean the things that you just love to lust after and the drugs that we use that causes us to be conflicted in our minds and inside of our hearts. But we're talking about the infirmities inside of your mind. We're talking about those thoughts. We're talking about those actions. We're talking about those reactions. When it comes to the conversation of it all. This, this is what he's talking about today. He's talking about our right of passage. We got a right to pass through those things. He's talking about we got to be developed into freedom. We got to, and it's a verdict. And we could choose our own verdict. Freedom or death row. Which one do we want to choose today? I choose freedom. I choose freedom. I don't want to keep being in that place in my mind and my thoughts when I know if I keep my mind staying on God, he's going to keep me in perfect peace. I know that if I keep my mind stayed on him, that when that thing is attacking me or that conversation is coming or that thing shaped me or, 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 or what we say, 
trigger something inside of me because maybe somebody could say something or do something that'll trigger something inside of you that'll make you get all out of character. Did you hear me? The Bible says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to the uncleanliness and to the iniquity unto iniquity. Even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. That's when you was free from righteousness. What fruit have ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? We are ashamed of some of the stuff we done done, some of the ways that we are acting. For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I'm going to say this one more time. We, me, you, him, her, they, we, all of us, have a right of passage. We got a right of passage to get through some things, to get past some things, to get over some things, to lose some things, and to simply cast some things at the feet of the Lord. We don't have to carry all this stuff. We carry too much stuff. We still carry stuff from our childhood into our adulthood, which has made us who we are and how we act towards one another and that's why can't nobody tell me nothing because I'm grown that's why I can do what I want to do when I want to do it and don't be a husband I'm the man I'm like okay baby you the man but can we pray together because I need to get some results I ain't getting no results right now I ain't getting, I, if these have not transformed as of yet. And I gave y'all those three focal points. Because if we do not allow ourselves to get out of that familiar, we can never go into the transition of being free of having that right of passage. And we got that right of passage when Jesus hung on the tree. When he hung up there on that tree, he gave us that right. We did not have to go through nobody else or ask nobody else. No. He wanted us to have a one-on-one -on -one intimate relationship with him that we may be able to understand. Now let's go back to Romans. See, I had to give y'all that so that y'all can understand that we all have that right. We all have that ability. We all have our final verdict. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Because God is the author and the finisher of it all. Yeah, but he gave us a choice. What's your verdict? Do you choose freedom or death row? It's your choice. It's all your choice. We, we, now he could make us. Baby, he is in the end anyway, because he said every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. You know when you're doing right or when you're doing wrong. You, you know, you know even before you do it, your very own thoughts. Those, those infirmities in our bodies and in our flesh. We think it's just sickness and ailment. Oh, my back hurt. Oh, I want God to fix that slip disc. Oh, okay. I ain't going to fix that slip disc to I fix your slip tongue. Oh, okay. I, wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. I'm going to turn my back. Because some of us, some of us, boy, we can let folks have it. I, and let's talk about it even. Because I let you have it and I ain't even got to cuss. And won't raise my voice. You'll be sitting on the curb swinging your leg. Sit down. And you'll be six to still swinging your leg. And your feet will not touch that ground. Did I say I'm talking about Yvette? I ain't talking about the pastor. I ain't talking about the prophet. I ain't talking about the woman of God. I'm talking about Yvette. That's my name, y'all. That's my name. That, I'm talking about the one that get triggered by certain things that is said by people and folk. Because we don't want to hear it. Because we tired of hearing it. I'm talking about that, that thing that is done or that conversation. That, can we just reason together? Just, I just want to reason. 
I just want a reason. Let's go back to Romans and eight. Romans eight. And I'm gonna finish off at verse nine. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He is none of his. So in other words, we gotta be led by the spirit. Oh, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself, listen. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. In other words, when he say quicken it, baby, he'll, he'll, he'll get you together. He'll, he'll get you together. He gonna check you when you get ready to get to fussing and cussing and wanting to fight. I bind and rebuke that spirit of fighting right now in the name of Jesus. When y'all want to hit somebody, please put your hands in your pocket and walk away. I bind and rebuke that spirit right now. I bind and rebuke that spirit when you try to control a person through your physical. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Some of y'all going to get mad at me. It's okay, y'all. I can only say what I see because I don't know half y'all in and the other half I do know we don't even talk like that and I love everybody with everything in me I love y'all the bits and the pieces so listen when I sit up here and tell you we as people have to put our bodies under subjection let me show you let me show you let me keep reading. I ain't got that much further to go. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of the of the because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. Therefore, brother, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. And what is to mortify? To mortify is to destroy the strength, vitality, or function of. It's to subdue or deaden the body by the appetites, especially by abstinence or self-inflicted pain or discomfort. It's uncomfortable to get out of that familiar place. We, everybody likes the familiar because it's not so hard for us to get used to the unfamiliar. See, we don't want to face the unfamiliar because the unfamiliar is the unknown. And anything that is unfamiliar and we don't know, it causes us to go into a place of fear. We fear what we don't know. We fear what's going to happen tomorrow. Especially when we're experiencing something. We fear what the doctor going to say because I got this pain right here, that pain right there. We scared of everything. We fear even being alone. If I express myself or I say this, then they may simply leave me. Well, leave me. Please walk away. No, I, I turn around and ruin. Please ruin. Please. Because I'm not going to be afraid to be alone. Why? Because God said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. He with me even into the very end of the world. So if you leave, then maybe God is trying to develop me to accept my freedom. See, everything that we go through is necessary that we go through it. What's the name of the sermon today? I will write a passage. The development of our freedom, part two. The verdict is freedom or death row. We got a right to choose what way that we want to take. We got a right to choose. But what we need to understand is the beginning wasn't working. And even though he done told you the end of it, he never told you what you had to do to get past it. And you got to understand that you got a right to pass it. Did, okay, let me. I'm finna, I'm finna break it all the way down. Listen to this.
You ain't got to keep dwelling on that past thing that happened to you. That causes you to get sad and depressed and want to separate yourself from others. Because you're afraid that somebody else is going to do the same thing. You don't have to keep being depressed and sad. Why? Because when Jesus hung up on that cross, he gave you a right to pass through that. How? Because he said, cast your cares on me. Is that not something that's a strain on your brain? Is that not something that you care about? Or do he say, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. He said, I'm going to perfect that thing that concerns you. So in perfecting that thing that concerns me, what do I got to go through to get perfected? I got to go through that again. And I got to go through it again. But what I got to go through? Each time that I go through it, he let me know you're stronger than you think you are. And you learned this the first time, but you didn't learn this. So in order for me to perfect it, I want you to eat it all and not regurgitate. Because some of us be throwing up. Y'all know I've been throwing up for two days. So in our regurgitation, in our regurgitation, we have a tendency of not understanding that this is stuff that is not useful for us. It don't agree with us. Let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you that it don't agree. Let me, let me show you. If you're walking around sad and depressed and feeling some type of way, How do it not agree with me? Because the next thing I'm going to do is commit suicide. I, I want to give it all up. I bad and rebuke that spirit of suicide right now. I'm going to turn my back and I'm going to say this right here. And they know exactly who I'm talking to. Do not ever say again that you're going to kill yourself if a person threaten you or try to leave you. Don't ever say, I'm gonna kill myself. Don't say it again, because they're not worth your life. They're not. They're not even worth their own life if they feel that they have to do something to you to get you to that point that you will simply bow down to them. Pull them down off that pedestal, baby. Pull them down. Because if you don't, God gonna take them away anyhow. Did, did y'all hear me? Anything or anybody that you exalt higher than God, he's gonna take it away anyhow. You ain't gonna have no peace. You always gonna be arguing and fighting. You're always going to be bickering and you'll never be able to come to a place of reason unless you're on your back. I'm sorry. No, I ain't. You will never get to that place of being able to come to an understanding if you cannot express yourself without fear. But because that's a familiar place, this is where we say, I'm not going to say nothing because I want to keep the peace. You ain't got no peace. Where your peace at? If you don't say nothing, you will never obtain that peace. Did y'all hear that? Do I need to repeat it? If you don't say nothing, you will never obtain that peace while you thinking if I be quiet I'm keeping the peace. No, it don't work like that. You ain't got no peace because there you go again. Th them thoughts. That stuff that got you all messed up. Twisted up. You can't eat. You can't say little sick. <laughs> I done been there before. <laughs> can't eat. Can't sleep. And, it, and then get mad. Th that Get mad, don't want to talk, don't want, and please don't touch me. The, all these things. We have a right 
a passage, you guys. We can choose to be free or death row. And when I say death row, he's not, I'm, I'm going to repeat it again. He's not just talking about sin. We kill our own self and walk the green mile. Everybody done seen that movie. We walk the green mile. How do we walk the green mile? By simply killing ourselves. We kill our own dreams. That's death row. We, if, if the Lord didn't say something to you, done spoke something to you, and then somebody else try to come and tell you no, or you can't, or it's going to be hard, they planting the seed. Now you watering it yourself, and you do not go and step out on it. Then you walking up the green mile, cause you didn't kill the only. If God didn't gave you a vision, He didn't give it to that person. So if you share with that person and they don't see it or even understand that vision, how is they even gonna embrace it? Stop telling people what you gonna do and just do. Because everybody ain't got that vision. Why? Because they are simply on death row. God say, I give man wisdom to get wealth. He the one that gave you that idea of that new hairstyle. He gave you that idea to cut that hole in that knee of them bands. Paying $40 for them when you can get some old jeans that cost $2 and cut it yourself. <laughs> Wash it and it's going to get fringed it too. I'm just all I'm saying. But somebody came up with that vision, right? Everybody got their own vision that God gave them. Shouldn't none of us be making nobody else millionaires? But we do because we are afraid to step out on our own. What is that? Killing your own self? Death row. Walking the green mile. We do not put enough into our own selves. We don't have enough confidence in our own selves to do anything. I remember when the Lord told me to come down here and start a ministry. And, and my sister was like, so what you going to do about your business up here? And it's just, you know, it's just going. So I said, I ain't worrying about that. I, I need, Well, you know, you could just transfer everything and get all stuff. And I haven't worked since February the 26th, the year of 2000. That was the last time I punched the clock. I moved down here. And see, the vision that God gave me, just like he gave everybody else a vision, I'm going to say this loud. There's no limits to God. So while other people not thinking or believing or can't see what God has shown me, my business up there is still bringing revenue in, and I've been down here for almost eight years. And I don't punch nobody's clock. See, the vision that God gives us, everybody else ain't going to be able to comprehend that vision. Everybody else ain't going to see what the next move is or what you think or what you believe or what you plan to do or even what you desire to do. Because they so busy Speaking other stuff into your life. Don't let nobody speak nothing into your life. No more. Because those seeds that they plant inside of you, you can water them yourself into believing that you are a can't. When God say you can. All you got to do is just simply believe. You have the right to pass through that place of doubt. Into belief. You have a right to understand. I know God can deliver me from this. I know God can change this. I know God will do this or fix this. You just got to want it in your heart. I just read it. You got to want to change. Sometimes it is hard to change. 
because we are so adapted and so used to doing certain things and we only do what we know, what we saw, what we were taught, what we learned, or simply what we believe. That's what we do. We don't even, we, we don't even know that our rite of passage is simply right here. It's right here. Let me give y'all an example. My daughter. My daughter called me today and she was telling me some things about my nephew. And because I have not spoken to my, my sister since my mother passed, July the 17th. June the 17th of last year, I have not spoken to her. My sister has not had a relationship with me in 25 plus years because of the choice she made not to because I chose God. So because of that, she told me, I know how you are and I know what you do and how you do things. I know, and so I just let her talk. I just let her say everything. And she was red hot pepper mad saying these things. And I was standing there just smiling. And my son was like, mama, I say, shh, let her get it all off her chest, baby. You going outside. This, what? We was in my mama hospital room, and she got the screaming. And, and I looked at her, I say, why are you mad? And why are you yelling? I say, calm down. I say, I'm just trying to reason with you, and you don't want to hear. No, because it's not going to go like that, because I know how you answer that. And then I just let her talk and get it out. I say, is you finished? She said, yeah. I say, you don't know me. You have not had a relationship with me in 25 years. I have talked to you. I could count on one hand how many times I talked to you. And that was only because of our mother put you on the phone without me asking her to because she wanted us to talk. I say, so you don't know me. I say, you know of me because you're my sister. I say, but you don't know me. I say, because if you knew me, you wouldn't be mad now, yelling and screaming. I say, if you knew me, you would try to reason with me and talk. I say, you don't know me, because if you knew me, then you would be scared while you messing with me. Because you don't know who my daddy is. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. But you said you're saved. Uh, I said, so you don't know me. I said, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray that God have mercy on you. Because I'm not going to get offended. Because he told me that if you offend the least of these. It's best that you put a milestone about your neck and cast yourself in the sea. In other words, you should commit suicide for messing with me. But because you're not afraid, I'm going to pray that God have mercy on you. Because I'm not going to get offended because I don't want you to be walking the green mile. <laughs> you choosing their wrong because you're messing with me. And so... I paraphrase the conversation. I chose to have a right to get past what my family and friends think of me. Because what they think of me, it's hard for us to get past. Because we get to thinking why they think of me like and we want to prove things, a show thing. So I embrace my rite of passage because of what they thought of me. God says, nah, 
That ain't you. That ain't you. When I died on the cross, you chose at some point in your life to believe that you were engrafted and in adopted into my world. And because you adopted me, then I ain't got to worry. It's okay. It's okay if you don't love me. Because your love conditional anyway. If I don't love you this way or do this certain thing, then you say you're not going to love me. I don't want that kind of love. It's okay if you don't love me. It's okay if you don't even like me. Because he said and warned me that they're going to hate you without a cause. So hate me, boo. But you better love me because if you don't, you go in the hell walking that green mile. <laughs> you better choose to love me. Are you walking that green mile? You you sentencing your own self to death row. It's okay. See, he gave us a rite of passage that we could get past all these heartaches. All these things that's been rooted down inside of us and did to us in marriages and relationships, on our jobs, in our families, how we was violated. I, I had to forgive my uncle who molested me as a child. Oh, wait a minute. I got molested three times as a kid by three different men at three different ages. So I felt like that I, I was just useless. Or I was just contaminated. And I just... But I had to forgive it. I had to get past it. I was standing before people preaching and prophesying and praying and laying hands, doing all this stuff. Until I seen this face again. And it triggers something. Them triggers, y'all. It triggers something. I said, Mama, why did you even tell me to come over here and you knew he was here? Because you knew if I knew he was here, I would not have even came. He said, she said, baby, you got to God say, Mama, please, I'll come back when he come. Now I'm mad at her too. And when I got ready to walk out, the Lord says, turn around and sit down. I say, I chose to listen to that spirit and I sat my tail down. But my feet kept. I, it ain't going to be easy to stop yourself. He never said it was going to be easy to stop yourself from doing you. I'm, I, I, I love saying this. You stop doing you so God can be God in you. If we don't stop being our own selves, we will never pass through with the rights that we have. We don't claim these rights. We don't claim these rights because we got a form of godliness. We do things because we know, oh, I'm going to church because it's Sunday. Oh, and I'm just going to sister, and I'm going to clap my hands. I'm sister. We don't do it. We, we, we just practicing rituals. But are we really doing it because we want to be free? We want to be delivered. We want to be here. We want to change. How can we change if we don't understand change? Everybody in here probably have been raised up in the church, know the scripture, can quote the scripture, but have we allowed those scriptures to become life in our lives to apply it that we can what? Obtain life. Obtain life. And not I choose life. Not to have everything, to have me all conflicted in my mind. I got a right to pass through that argument because guess what? I'm not fit to argue with you. When you are, when a person arguing with you or y'all getting into it or y'all saying that, don't say nothing. And they gonna be screaming and howling and screaming and howling. And then when they get through, when you smile, just start backing up because that's gonna make them real mad. That, that's gonna make them real mad. Smile at them and then be like, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> because some got to be wrong with them. Some got, the Bible talks about self-control. He say anger but saying not. That's what he did. We get so mad. We, we a mess. We have a right to pass through all these things. So you ain't got to worry about what nobody say, what nobody do, how nobody act, and nobody... Be. We get so messed up with the cares of this world and this life that we cannot even focus on the thing that will keep us in peace 
and give us life. And that's God. We get so wrapped up that we scared that you we scared of losing a job. We scared we can't get a job. We scared we gonna get put out. We scared we gonna be homeless. We scared we gonna lose this or lose that. We scared we gonna be alone. We scared, we scared. God is not a God of fear, but of love. No, uh-uh. Power, love, and of a sound mind. So if he got all the power to do something, you already know that he loved you and he loved you so passionately until he came down here and died for you. And so you should have soundness in your mind just on that. And everything else is just obsolete. Everything else is out. I was going through something with my son. I had to go to Texas and get him. And the person who went with me said, you know what? You just be so calm. This is just so, I be going crazy. I said, girl, I ain't even worried about this. The devil just trying to distract me. I said, but I'm going to do this and do this. Because God told me to. I said, then I got to hurry up and get back to Mobile because I got to go to church Sunday. Got time to be fooling around with the devil and his devices. He'll try to bring the people that's closest to you to knock you off your square. The people who walking with you or talking with you are the ones that you with every day. Or how about your co-workers? Oh, I thought they was cool, but they all stabbing you in your back. Stab me in my back. Guess what? I got a shield back there. It ain't going to penetrate nothing. It's okay. Because that lie you told ain't going to do nothing but boomerang. It's okay. Go ahead and lie. Because you ain't doing nothing but sending yourself to hell. And when you see, and when you even know somebody else going to lie to you, don't even ask them the question. Don't help people go to hell. You, Y'all get that? God says a liar ain't going to tear in his sight. So if a liar ain't going to tear in his sight and you know they're going to lie, why you going to help them go to hell by asking them? You know they're going to lie. Don't ask. Just don't ask because you already know the question. Sometimes I'd be in conversation, I'd be like, J -j truthfully. Even before, and then I'd be like, you know what? Don't even ask. J don't even ask. J it's okay. Because I'm not going to help you go to hell because I'm concerned about your soul. I'm concerned about your salvation. And even though I may be mad at you, I still don't want you to go to hell. Who wants to go to hell? Anybody in here, I'm ducking. Because I don't want to go to hell. Are we already living in hell? No, you ain't. Mm -mm. Don't even say that no more, y'all. I'm living in hell now. I'm catching hell now. No, you're not. Because catching hell is when you're running after. And I ain't trying to catch hell. I'm not. I ain't trying to catch hell. I ain't trying to go to hell. I don't want no parts of hell. I don't. The Bible says the saved don't scarcely make it into heaven. I'm trying to really make it there. It ain't no guarantee I am, but I'm trying. With everything in me. The Bible declares that we got to write a passage. I want you guys today, help me out, get yellow sheets of paper and red pens and start writing down all this stuff that causes you to be conflicted in your mind, that causes you to be in a place of fear, that causes you to be in a place that you're depressed, you're sad, you're hopeless. I wouldn't give her anything that's contrary to the will and the will of God. I want y'all to write all this stuff down because we're going to put this stuff on the altar and we're going to start praying and you're going to have a right to pass through this. And in the midst of you having that right to pass through, that means you're going to cast your cares on the Lord because he cared for you. You're not going to pick it back up, put it in your pocket, your pocket book, your perfect water whatever and walk back out the door with it you're gonna leave it right here you're not gonna allow it to be a strain on your brain if it's something that you went through even in your childhood that still causes you to be conflicted or constricted inside of your mind you want to write that thing down if there's something going on in your relationships in your marriages on your jobs even in your bodies it does not matter what it is i want y'all to write all these things down so that we could get the stuff on the altar we want to have that right of passion the only way that you're going to be able to have a rite of passage. He said, come on ye that labor and are heavy laden. What, who, who is laboring? It does not, labor does not just mean you going to a job. Labor is when it's a strain on your brain, when it's something that you're asking God to do and he have not yet done it. And in the midst of him not yet doing it, please understand, it may not be the right time. He may still be developing you to enter into that freedom. The only way that we could be developed to be entered into freedom is if we go through something. You cannot be Free from something that you ain't experienced. I'm going to walk up here. If 
you do not experience something, you cannot be free from it. How can you be free from anything that you have not experienced? No, you can't because you don't even know what it's about. So it does not matter what it is, how it is, because we build up these walls and we put a fortress around ourselves and we think that we are protecting ourselves because of, you got to change, you, you got to separate yourself. In order for you to stop doing things that you really don't want to do, but your body and your mind and your thoughts cause you to do it, you got to separate yourself from some people and the places that you go. You have to. Because when we constantly subject ourselves to these things, it put us in a place of weakness. The Bible says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we do the things that we don't want to do. But that thing that we do want to do, we don't do. Because sin is always present. So it's not you. But it's the sin that dwells within you. Write down that stuff. Every addiction. Everything that we want to loose ourselves from in our minds. All bitterness. All hate. Any and everything that causes us to put up a wall and seclude ourselves. To, to separate ourselves from other because we think and believe that if, if I stay away from this person or if I don't do this, you get like David, y'all, and go running towards that thing and face it and don't be afraid. When somebody starts trying to degrade you or make you feel like you ain't worthy or you can't do this, I, you know, I asked this person. I had to ask him. Because he said something to me that triggered something. And I looked, I said, who do you think you are? You uncircumcised Philistine. <laughs> you, who do you think? Don't make me cut your neck off with the word of God. Who do you think? The prophet said, you do know you was cussing that man out. <laughs> The biblical way. <laughs> the better. Who do you think you are, you uncircumcised Philistine? You don't know who my God is. And you playing with me? You coming up on me? Don't you know about the God I serve is a God of power and love and of assignment? I ain't scared of you. I ain't conflicted and scared. You know, because they Israelites, they were scared. The Bible says Saul was a big, tall man, and he was a king over the army. And the Bible says that when Goliath came out there, he came out there, he was nine feet tall and had all this and had all that. Talking about who you doing on that riff round. The Bible says that they was afraid and they were scared. And here come little old David. Little old David. Wait a minute. What? Who is that? His brother say, what you doing now? You always meddling in other folks. What? Go on back on that and tend to that and she. He say, the Bible says that David ignored him. <laughs> and looked. Well, the king said. That whoever fight him and, and, and defeat him, he gonna put jewels on him and all this and all that and all that. David say, I don't want no jewels. I just want that nigga to know who my God is. He don't know who he playing with. He don't know what he doing. Maybe, wait a minute, he ain't heard of him. He ain't heard of him, so let me tell him who he is. He said, wait a minute, hold on. Put on his, he said, I'll fight him king. The king said, you ain't nothing but a boy. How you going to go up against that? Don't you know that's a giant? The, how you going to go up against him? How you gonna? The Bible says, y'all don't get it. I'm David, y'all here. See, y'all don't get it. I may be the one that tends to my daddy's sheep. <laughs> but when the lions 
and the tigers and the bears tried to come. He said, I killed them all with my bare hands. I'm not scared of the lions and tigers and bears. So I sure ain't scared of him. So they put all that stuff on him. Put a, the Bible says, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all trying to give me something that I ain't even earned. I ain't even earned all that, so take that. That man went on there with a little skirt, look, had his loins. <laughs> the Bible says he went to the brook and kneeled down and he found, what was it, three smooth stones. He ain't get none that had no uh, real smooth. Now, if y'all pay attention, when you go to a brook of some water, if you stand on the brook of the, you may slip and slide right on in there. Yeah. The Bible says he found some stuff. But if it's a if, if it's a brick or, or, or some kind of stones in there with some rugged edges, they'll kind of like brace you, won't they? And keep you from going in. The Bible says he found three smooth stones. And when he picked them up, the Bible said, I could just see David, I love you. That's my main man. He, the Bible said, he took that sling and he looked at it. He said, all the while, Goliath said, what y'all gonna send a little boy out here to me? And who did that? David already mad. Because he said, wait a minute, hold it. Y'all walking around here scared? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine coming against God's army? Don't y'all know who God is? I'm talking about the one true and living God. I'm talking about the God that can take everything down. He said every problem that is to you, he says it's like a drop in a bucket to him. He said it's nothing. Then he goes on to say it's less than nothing. So it doesn't even exist to him. I, I just gave y'all scripture, y'all. I ain't making this stuff up. It said, it said in Jeremiah, our promise to him, to the nation's promise, is as a drop in a bucket. So if I drop some water in a bucket, that, that, that little drop is going to just disappear. He said it is nothing. And then he said it is less than nothing. So it don't even exist. So that thing that you're afraid of, write it down on that paper. Because we're going to be like David. And we're going to run towards that thing that we don't fear. And we're going to throw that, that, throw that rock. And it's going to kill it. And then, and in the midst of it, you're going to sever it. How do you sever it? Cut the head off the snake, baby. Don't, don't tolerate it. Anything that causes you to get in a place of discomfort. I've been saying access denied. Can't nobody get access to my peace. And so when you try to disrupt my peace, I'll talk to you later. Click. When you try to when you try to discombobulate me or make me think and believe that I am not what God say I am. Now you may say that I'm not, but God said I was. Who are you? You uncircumcised Philistine. You the world. You you the Bible says that his word gonna go out and not return unto him void. So if he say that I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire. Well, you ain't got no job and you ain't do it. So I, baby, I got the riches of the Lord because the earth and the fullness, the earth and the Lord's and the fullness thereof is his. He say the silver and the gold is his. Don't you know every precious gem come up out of the earth? Y'all know that. Listen to this. And the deeper you go, the hotter it get. And the more precious and valuable the stone becomes. I majored in science. Listen to me. So don't think or don't believe that you're not going to go through nothing. You just got to know who you are and whose you are to get through, to have that right. A passage. Because this too shall pass. 
This is just temporary. This is just a, a milestone. This is something that you got to go through in order for you to know that I'm the only one that can get you through. This is something that you got to go through so that you can testify about. Because while you're going through, if everybody notices it here, when you're going through, somebody always calling you or trying to get with you, and you trying to get them through, and they going through the same thing you done went through or you're going through it now. Man, dog, it's going to be all right. It's going to such, such, such. I just went through that with my girl. Man, such, and such, such, such. Don't you know such, 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 such? It's going to be all right. Yeah, but you wouldn't be able to tell them that if you had not experienced it yourself. That this too shall be. You got a right to pass through it. You got a right to get through it. And don't know one person know everything. Don't know one person know everything. Write down all these things, you guys. I hope y'all been writing down as I'm talking. Y'all know I be talking. I love to talk. And I love to tell the truth. Anything that come out of my mouth gonna be a truth. Because I'm scared to lie. I'm scared to lie because he told me years ago, he said you a liar. He said the truth ain't in you. Nowhere. Stop sitting up here talking about I love the Lord. You a liar. Because if you love me, you will lie. <laughs> if you love me, you wouldn't do this and you wouldn't do that and you wouldn't do that. Well, Lord, I love you, but I just got, I need some help because I can't do it on my own because I like to do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just confess it. God know it's hard for us to stop doing things and getting over stuff. Why can't we? He gave us access, the right to pass. We ain't got to go to nobody else. That we can have an intimate relationship on our own. That we can simply tell him, Lord, I need you to help me do this. Lord, I can't do it on my own. Lord, it's hard for me to stop cussing. I, he know that because he said everything and everybody can, it can be tamed in this world. But it's only one thing that can't be tamed and that's the tongue. So he know we got a flip mouth. He said, bitter and sweet cake are my same family. It's hard for me not to cuss you out and you to trigger something. It's a, so I'm a confess, Lord. I'm a cusser. Look, every word that used to come out of my mouth was MF this and MF that. Ooh, baby, I let you hit it. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Even to my kids, go sit your MF down now. I'm going to beat your MF butt. But I said, that's the word. I'm telling y'all. Yvette. Talk about Yvette. I used to just cuss, 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 cuss. I was like, Lord, please brother my tongue. I can't do it, Jesus. I'm cussing. Me and, me, me and the people standing in, in the fellowship hall, and we was getting ready to eat and everything. I'm just talking, 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 cussing. And they looking at me, and the lady say, do you know you just cuss? I said, no, I didn't. She said, yes, you did. I said, oh, it's so familiar, and I confess if I did, please pray for me. That's confessing. Ain't no sense of being ashamed. Ooh, I'm so sorry. No, you ain't. You intended on doing it, and you didn't even know you was doing it. That's why I say, Lord, forgive us for our sins, knowing and unknowing. Because it's a lot of stuff that we do that we see and we don't know. But then when we do know, then you confess the Lord, help me, God. I need some help. I don't, I don't care. I tell all my peers, I don't care. I need help in any area of my life. I'm not one of the pastors that say, oh, I got it all together. Oh, I do this. Or No, no, we all here together, getting it together, together, baby. So can okay, nobody point their finger, wag their head, and nobody else, because guess what? Sin is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. It don't matter what you're doing there. We all messing up some kind of way. So how? Because there's none that's sin free. There's none that's righteous. No, not one. But he wants us to be in our right mind. So if we, him, her, they, we are feeling some type of way about some things that God said, you should. Because that's called conviction. And conviction is what helps you come into what? Repentance. Repentance helps you come into what? To turn and change. That transition. That change. That life. And that's where you get light. That write the passage. Write these things down, please. And when you get to writing them down, please bring them to the altar. 
come to the altar, and after you put these things on the altar, please start praying for yourself.